Hey guys, so really, really unfortunate update today. These are internal parasites. This is what I'm dealing with right now. It's really, really bad on my twig catfish. His name is Kitster. I named him because these guys can live around 10 years. Some have them clocked at 15 years that they'll live for. I'm really hoping to have this guy for a long time, but right now I'm looking at him just sitting on this piece of driftwood in my aquarium and he's super uncomfortable. He's got, he's got probably like 10, 10 roundworms coming through his body and they're starting to sprout out of the anus of the fish. It is super painful to watch, guys. I'm seeing him right now, like he's, he's balancing on his face so that he doesn't have to touch the rest of his body to anything because he's very, very uncomfortable. The same thing is going on with my pearl garami, which don't live that long, but honestly, even if, even if it only lives for another few months, I would rather it be parasite free in its death than to die like this because it's also got so many, so many parasites coming through the body and sprouting out of the fish's anus once again. It's just extremely painful to watch these fish be eaten away from the inside by these red worms. Um, I didn't see this coming. It's already taken over one of the twig catfish. I lost my baby twig catfish. I've lost uh, a rainbow fish. I've actually lost three rainbow fish now. I've lost pencil fish. I've lost ghost catfish. It's really taking over everything, guys, and I'm starting to get really worried because I ordered the medication a few days ago. Still hasn't shown up yet. And at this point, guys, I'm not sure that they're gonna wanna take it um, because after a while, I'm gonna put it through the food, but after a while of the fish having parasites, they don't really accept food anymore. They just kind of give up on themselves like a lot of animals will when they're sick, they stop eating, they just kind of give up and they die. So I might have to do a more direct approach. I might have to force feed uh, Kitster and the Garami at least, and we'll see what we can do for the rest. The Bolivian rams also look like they've started to contract um, these these round worms when I first got them they were they were the le they were the most picky they would not eat anything and it could be that the round worms came with them I wasn't uh, familiar enough like a lot of you probably are watching this video I wasn't familiar enough with uh, parasitic round worms to know the signs but now that I do I'm I'm guessing that it's come with the Bolivian rams because they've been uh, they've not been eating anything from the from the beginning not 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 anything but like um they've not been eating that much so hopefully in this video uh either this is a short update and i'm telling you guys that i'm shutting down the 40 gallon aquarium because i will shut down the 40 gallon aquarium guys if kister dies i built this aquarium for this twig catfish if he dies i'm done i'm done um the 75 gallon paludarium will still go, but the 40 gallon will be shut down. I'll do like a quarantine tank, some plants. I might do a leopard gecko in here or something like that, but I can't do it anymore, guys, with this parasite in the water. It's just too painful to watch. Um, after I've worked on so many things in this aquarium, after I've worked on the plants, after I've worked on the fish, I've put so much money into this aquarium, and to have it go out in such an excruciating, painful way is is not worth another attempt at this 40 gallon so on the other hand hopefully the medication does arrive and i'm able to target feed these guys my uh my midterm exam ends today so hopefully i'll have that done out of the way and then i can focus on these guys and making them healthy again and like i said if not then we kind of shut things down so Let's see what happens. Also, sorry about the voice, it's still pretty early in the morning. Okay, I've got good news and I've got bad news. The good news is, is the medication is uh, all ready. The bad news is, is uh, I have to go pick it up. And even worse, it went straight to my junk folder in my email, so I didn't even know it was ready to be picked up. So I could have picked it up a few days ago, which is frustrating, but so hopefully we're gonna get it tonight. I'm gonna to do a water change right now, uh, and then we're gonna start medicating tonight, and hopefully that's enough to fix it. The parasites are really bad, guys. We're just gonna to have to see how this goes. Hey guys, so I'm here with Hope, and uh, this is the sketchiest drug deal I've ever done. <laughs> it actually is granted, a drug deal. <laughs> <laughs> granted, it's the only drug deal I've ever done <laughs> that I can say on camera, but... Um, yeah, we're just literally at someone's house, so 
fingers crossed this medication works, I guess. But we're going to start medicating when we get home. So we'll show you guys how to do that in a second if the person ever shows up. Okay, so we're back at the house. And we've got our cattle dewormer, actually. It's this treatment that we're using. It's called fenbendazole. And I hope I said that right. And it's basically a watered-down cattle dewormer that we're going to be using for our fish. Um, the best way to get parasites, internal parasites, out of fish is to put the, the medication into their foods that they're actually ingesting it. But for that to work, the fish actually have to eat the food. And for fish that have had parasites for a long time, like uh, Kitster has, like the Gourami has, like some of the Rams have, uh, they don't really want to eat anymore, they've just kind of given up. So for some of these guys, we're going to have to use a syringe, which they've handily provided us with, to directly inject the medication into the fish's digestive system. So right now we're gonna film both of those and hopefully long term it works. We're gonna be doing this for two weeks, maybe three weeks, and we'll probably have an update later on or it'll all just be one video. I haven't decided yet. Okay, so medication is in, thanks to some help. <laughs> So we, we force fed some medication just straight to the ones that were really bad where the parasites were coming out of them like with Kitster and the Garami and like I was saying. And then we also mixed in some with the brine shrimp and we just spread it throughout the entire tank. So the, tank, the tank's pretty cloudy. Now we use just a small dosage of what we uh, had on the packaging, but I think that it's gonna be better to use it over a longer period of time than to kill them suddenly because that could cause an ammonia spike and it's probably not great to have a bunch of parasites rotting in the guts of these fish. So we're going to stick with the force feeding once a week and once a week with the food. And hopefully it turns out really well and we start seeing results even this week would be awesome. Hey guys, so we're back. Um, hair is getting long, oh my gosh. Um, we're back and it's only like a day later. And the reason for that is because I hate the look of the worms. They're hanging out of these fish. I medicated yesterday, as you guys know. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see how easily they'll come out manually. Um, if, if they don't, then I'm gonna leave them. You know, if they do come out, then I'm still gonna give it, I'm still gonna give the fish that I, uh, that I treat some, some antibacterial medication. Sorry, I'm kinda out of breath, I don't know why. <laughs> and then that hopefully speeds up the healing process, but I just hate the look of these worms hanging out of the fish. Looks disgusting. I know they're in a ton of pain because they're always swimming in a way that kind of avoids putting any pressure on those areas. So let's see if we can help them out. Okay, so we've got the man himself, Kitster, the twig catfish, in this little container here. I've been working with him for just a few seconds now and it doesn't seem like there's any parasites protruding right now from the rear of the fish. Um, Looking up close, it just makes me realize how beautiful this fish really is. The patterning on him, it, it's a brown fish, it's a black and brown fish, you know. But just the patterning on him is amazing. The finnage is amazing. It's, it's such a cool fish. I'm so glad I got this guy. And I really, really hope that I can save him. As I was looking over him, it doesn't seem like there's any parasites hanging out. Uh, but that could mean one of two things. Either the medication is working and these guys are starting to die, they're starting to shrivel up in the gut of the fish, or they could just be retreating because I moved this fish into a plastic container and I kind of stressed it out and there was some water movement and stuff like that, or they're just done laying, or they're just done uh, reproducing eggs or uh, live bearing. Because what they do, this type of parasites, um, I, I forget, columnaris I think it is, or something like that. Um, what they do is they produce live young and they'll kind of shoot the babies out of the anus of the fish into the gravel so that other fish can pick it up and those young parasites can start growing in those fish. I'm hoping that the medication is working. We're gonna give this, we're gonna give the whole tank another shot of brine shrimp with medication tonight just to um, help it out. I think it's better that I'm doing lower doses still and instead of instead of big doses because lower doses with food seems to be helping a lot more except i'm going to be feeding these guys the medication directly every week so fingers crossed i'll give you guys an update in a few days hey guys so as you can see we are into we are into the end of the week for medicating um through the food we've been medicating and orally we've been medicating 
for the uh, Cichlid Kitster, my Twig Catfish, and the Pearl Grammy. And uh, the Pearl Grammy has passed away this morning. Uh, I found her while her slime coat was still on, before the snails had gotten to her. Uh, it looked like she literally just died maybe 15 minutes before I had gotten up and checked on the tank. So that really sucks <laughs> because I really like that fish and I had plans to have her in the uh, in the 75 gallon as kind of the centerpiece and I, I don't know, I just really like grommy. Uh, grommies, I guess is the plural and I know they're not very long lived fish and sometimes they can be um, delicate fish like, like uh, labyrinth I don't know what the anabantoids, um, like anabantoids all can be. Uh, another thing is the cichlid, the Bolivian ram, has lost buoyancy, so he's lost the ability to uh, use his swim bladder. He's not really swimming, he's kind of hopping, and when he is swimming, it's not an easy thing. He's got to really push to do it, you know, he's pushing down to keep himself up and in the water column. So having the gourami die and having the cichlid um, with these effects kind of makes me worried for uh, for Kitster because you know he's arguably more delicate between the three of them and he's the only one that's done well so far now he's he's lived through a lot of things you know he was my first fish uh, in in you know the community setting um, so he's been through a lot of stuff that I've I've uh, messed up on and I'm hoping that makes him hardy enough to get through this uh, I am, now before I continue actually, I have the parasites right here. So because the Garami died, you can't really see them with me holding them there. When the Garami died, it actually gave me the opportunity to do a partial biopsy. So I didn't, I didn't really um, cut into the Garami, I too soft of a heart for that. But I was able to remove some of the external parasites that were trying to uh, escape, escape and latch on to another host. Now, uh, I, I removed five of them, uh, which means there's probably way, way more young inside the intestines and stomach of the fish. But I was able to remove five that were hanging out directly, and um, two of which are still alive. Two or three, I think, are still alive. And it's, it's so, I don't know, I don't even know how to describe it, because it's like, wow, these things are multiplying like snails unlike snails they're actually targeting fish and they're really good at it and it's really hard to get rid of them so I think what I'm gonna do now is it, it wasn't that hard to remove the parasites from the gourami I think they were um, easier to get rid of because the gourami had already passed and they were trying to get away and get into another host um, but I think if they are out then I will try to remove them from Kitster um, I'm, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna try to remove them from Kitster if I can. It doesn't look like they're gonna cause too much damage by being, being pulled out. Um, and even if they get cut, I don't think they can regrow, but either way, I'm gonna try to make sure that I don't cut them. I'm trying to, I'm gonna try and remove the entire parasite. Starting today, I'm gonna do a water change, and then I'm going to dose as much of this as it said I'm allowed to. So right now, I've been cutting down on the doses because I've been going directly through the food. Now what I'm gonna do, and make sure if you guys do this, you remove the carbon and any kind of chemical filtration. I'm sorry, I should have mentioned that at the beginning. Um, but what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna dose as much of it as I can, still through the food, but I'm not gonna dose, like right now I've been doing 0.25 uh, milliliters. Now I'm gonna be doing um, 25 milliliters, I, I, whatever the measurement is. I'm gonna start doing the full measurement. Um, the full measures of medication so that hopefully this can get out completely and again that's gonna be through the food and I'm still gonna be medicating directly through Kitster because Kitster has stopped eating now closing thoughts um, what should I have done I should have I should have gotten a five gallon to quarantine all these fish in it's really frustrating to have a quarantine tank because it's a tank that you're taking care of you're doing water changes on and there's no fish in it but I think it's really a good idea to have a quarantine tank and so what I'm gonna do from now on is I'm gonna get a quarantine tank running and every month I'm gonna have a fish in there every month and then every month I'm gonna move that fish out and put another one in to put in one of the actual display tanks and I think that's actually gonna cut down on um, 
it's going to cut down on having parasites, on having infections, on having ick and stuff like that. And that way I can medicate in a preventative way. So right now all the fish are, all the fish that don't have really bad parasites are eating the food. And I think that's staving off any parasites. You know, I'm not seeing any uh, white stringy poop that would indicate that there is a parasite inside of them. And I think that's because they're eating the food before the parasites can ever get bad. So once the anole moves from the five gallon to the 75 gallon, I'm going to get an actual five gallon fish tank. I'm gonna set up a sponge filtration. I'm gonna get a heater on there and I'm gonna start medicating fish before I put them in the tanks. Now expect hill stream loaches, expect um, red lizard catfish if I can find them, expect maybe chocolate garami, expect stuff like that. Really cool, intricate stuff. You guys know my style. And, uh, and yeah, so I'm sorry this video ended off on a bad note. Tried to give it a little bit of hope there with the new direction that I'm gonna be taking. But uh, if you guys wanna see more on these tanks, uh, more on different projects that I have, sometimes vlogs and stuff like that, make sure you subscribe. If you liked this video, you found it informative, you found it very real, I find that that's kinda how my videos come out, then uh, like this video, I would greatly appreciate it. And I will see you guys next Sunday.